Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our beautiful state. It is my honor and privilege to welcome and host the first Green Party of California gubernatorial candidates conversation. It's my honor to introduce to uh, first to introduce the two gubernatorial candidates for the Green Party we have here. Please, would you start, Madam? Yes. Um, hi, my name is Veronica Fembrez, and I am running to be the first black woman to ever register in the history of the state of California as a gubernatorial candidate. I've belonged to the Green Party for 14 years. Um, I'm proud to be a Green because of everything that we stand for. And I stand with the people in the state, and I stand with my party, of which Chris is a member of my party. I support all of our candidates. Um, I lift us all up. Thank you very much. Please, sir. My name is Christopher Carlson, and Veronica Fimbrace is exactly right. And because Veronica Fimbrace is running is one of the reasons why I'm really glad to be a Green Party member of California. Thank you both. And uh, yeah, there's there's lots I can say, but we can. I mean, you can continue. Yeah, on. Um, I want to defend education, and I want to defend the arts, and I think that as a kind of a permaculture uh, concept and, and consciousness grows in our country, uh, I'd like to fight mental health with kind of human experience and, and going back to the human skills. Well, thank you. Thank you both. As I shared with you during our online yes. communication, yes. let's choose. <laughs> We can do that. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're, you're a consummate gentleman, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> what this conversation is about are five topics. The first one being change. Uh, myself and Sid saw this as a twofold: grassroots and legislative. So I wanted I will be asking each of you to talk a little bit about that, and then we'll have a conversation. The next topic is children and youth, and we know why. That's urgently important as Greens. The third one is guns and the NRA, the National Rifle Association. The fourth one is our state, California, at 175 years old. I want you to talk about your vision as a gubernatorial candidate for our state when it turns 175 on September 9th, 2025. And the last of the five topics is what's important and passionate to each of you on our platform, our, our key values are our pillars. So you have a wide range to pick from. So that's the conversation we like to have. You can tackle anyone in any order. Which one would you like to go first? Um, I'd like to start with um, our youth and, and guns in the NRA. All right, thank you. Um, I think because of the, the never again, because of that traumatic experience and um, I still cry for the kids of Sandy Hook um, as a nurse and a person that's uh, full of compassion and um, healing and light. I want to do something about what's ailing our youth now. Uh, the unnecessary murder of these teens, these 14s and uh, preteens, these kids, their kids, the fact that they're being annihilated by people that have no right to bear arms, that should not be bearing arms and should not have access to arms is disturbing, but I wanted to stop. Um, we're, our party is a social justice and a non-violent party. Yes. We stand for that, and so we embrace uh, never again, because okay. it should never happen again. If they only kept those uh, arms in military, that would be something, but they don't, and they should not be selling them in gun shops, they should not have uh, heavy-duty magazines. They should not have access to any of the stuff. We don't need that. Thank you. We don't need that in California. Our youth don't need that. They need to go to class feeling that they can learn something, that they're going to have their life at the end of the day. When the class bell rings, they're going to be able to go home and be safe with their family and loved ones. This is wrong. The NRA... Uh, uh, treat them like they're vampires because they're sucking <laughs> the psychological well-being of our kids and they're harming them with this and uh, there's no excuse for it I don't want it and we need to end it so as Appreciate governor it. that would be part of my platform I would um, fight I, I would fight for our state 
and for the people of our state, the residents. Thank you so much, my dear heart. Would you like to take this time to talk about that or something else? Uh, I, I thought that was a great way to start. Okay. Um, what a point of entry, you know, my favorite Green Party pillar of nonviolence okay. starts to dictate a lot of your action. Um, any moment when you least expect it. And it's, it's not the same. Sandy Hook, you know, is a situation where that was the son of the teacher. Mm. How do you stop a teacher's child from visiting that teacher? Teachers require assistance all the time. How do you keep that student who was not a student attending that classroom from having the perfect face, the perfect disguise to get into this place? All, all around us, we're finding our safe spaces penetrated. Yes. And how did we talk about treating mental health uh, in cognitive behavioral therapy as an environmental mood and thought process? How did the environments of specifically our public schools change so that kids are in these thoughts and moods where they're having the idea and supported idea and reinforced idea that the best way out of this reality is to take as many people with them as they can. Mm. That's a pretty severe mindset. Wow. And we're seeing that mindset reproduce. So we need to look at why private schools are not having this problem so much. And why this is specifically a public school issue. And why when people are sending their children to public schools into a safe place, not only if there is a gun sighting on campus, are those students not locked down properly? But there are issues we've had in this last uh, incident where our in safe schools officers were not available when they needed to be available. Then let's take this on to NRA. Yeah. So how about some words of wisdom on the NRA? Are your concerns or uh, solutions about the NRA? Well, one of the main solutions that I feel would be um, endemic to this conversation okay. uh, would be to not take money from the NRA. Candidates. If, no candidates should be okay. taking money from the NRA. Do you all take? We do not take, <laughs> oh no. Okay. We do not take money from corporations. Green, green Party candidates do not take money from corporations, from big oil, from big pharma, pharma ecology, from um, the NRA, uh, did I leave something out? I don't know. If a really big farmer offered me some money. <laughs> no, pharma. Pharmacology. Uh, <laughs> that's why I went back. <laughs> You're funny, Chris. <laughs> Very cute. But, um, but that um, if, if we don't take money from those people, and so that's a non-issue for us. Definitely. What is an issue for us is that we are grassroots. And like grassroots, you have to plant seeds. So the seed is the thought of our party and where we start in the ground and we're lifting up and we're building up we're reaching for that sun that light mm -hmm. and that light is our vision that yes. light is our vision of way, the way we as a party see things around us we see our land we see our air we see our water we have problems with all of those things but we see each other we're a out of all the parties and i i don't take away from the humanitarian aspect of anybody or anyone or any party, but I see our party as the party of compassion, of caring, and dealing with humanity and one another. We care about each other. Thank you very much. Did you want to talk more about the NRA? Something that has grown out of response to the NRA, and I, I always wonder about how every action has an opposite reaction, how um, people have become united against Trump as a president, right, where we were kind of fracturing before. And we've seen youth stepping up. I call this next generation, everyone's calling it Generation Z. I hate that name. Oh, really? You guys are the lucky ones. <laughs> okay. Call them the lucky ones. Yes. They're the lucky ones who still have a sliver of memory of what it was like before they had a cell phone. They were the last generation before this 
technology singularity. <laughs> and at the same time, they've been able to use that technology from a very early age as a tool for gathering and dispersing information. So, show what we're so we're seeing, and I'm proud to say some theater kids, you know, you yeah. might call them actors, but they're not getting probably paid well, <laughs> um, standing up and, and, and really showing that there's a place in society for artists as social ministers. You change agents. Change agents. Change agents. Change agents. Change agents. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, we, we've done a good job of dealing with uh, those two. How about your California at 175? What is each of your vision for our state? Because you're running for governor, that's leadership for the two of you. Um, what do you see at 175? What do you want to at see at 175? At 175, I see us uh, being at a place where we no longer are a drought-stricken state, yeah. where we have where we have water um, in abundance, so that everyone can have clean water to drink. I, I see us as a state that is using more wind and using less and less oil. By then, hopefully, we'll be not using any oil unless it's mandatory for something. Okay. Uh, but I'd I like to see us being an environmental uh, conscientious state, like our party. We're about environmentally conscious as a party, and I'd like to see our state pick up those tools of wind farms and turbines and, and water wheels and things that generate electricity and power without having to go to nuclear or anything that contaminates. I like to ban um, glycophosphates from Roundup and all that stuff, things made by bear or uh, pesticides that, that are killing um, our butterflies and our bees and uh, things that bear makes and Monsanto. I like that we have a right to know what's in our food. We have a right for labeling. These are all concerns. And I like to think that at that place in our 175th anniversary, September 9th, 2025, <laughs> that we would be there yes. and we would have all those things going on for us. Okay. It, it's, a, it's exciting yes. at the prospect. It's yes. very exciting. Thank you. 175. 175. California. I remember when the license plate said sesquicentennial on the bottom. That was such a strange <laughs> word. Yeah. Um, we have explored, we sent James Cameron down into the Mariana Trench. We've mapped the Indian Ocean with sonar and we've discovered craters in the Indian Ocean that we never found before. We are waking up to a new age of wisdom and scientific knowledge and, and awareness that, you know, there are thousands of near-Earth objects being discovered every year. We're doing the calculus to keep track of them. and. In the next seven years, California can join, being that we're such a large economic power, being that we have Boeing and, and all by LAX, you see, you know, Lockheed and, and, and JPL. Raytheon. We've got all of the rocket companies. We've got SpaceX. Okay. We, can, we can, you know, lock Elon Musk in his house next time he comes home. And, and really see a place where we look our entire climate change energy economy is susceptible if there yes. is if there is an impact it would completely destroy our clean energy right. infrastructure so we need to figure out a way to also prep and safeguard as we build this new 50 billion dollar infrastructure in the state to make sure that not only is it earthquake proof but it's also impact and disaster proof right. and, and really build up the kind of the disaster responsibilities of our state because we can knock out war, we can get along with each other. At that point, it's going to be who can be the most helpful. I love it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to 175 <laughs> both of you. <laughs> Me too. Chris made it exciting. Yeah, you did too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and platform, uh, this is the fifth one I wanted to talk about, but we're because we'll go back to the and we'll end with legislative and grassroots. Okay. Yes. But what platform, what pillar, you know, you all have mentioned um, issues out of being Greens that they're dear to each of you. So if you could take a few moments to talk about our platform, what inspired you, maybe how come you became a Green, if that's the thing that got you there, or what has kept you a Green. So I'm really trying to dig at the who you are as a Green. 
Does that make sense? It does. I, okay. I, think I, I think I got you. All righty. Um, so um, I had an opportunity to work for somebody that I really respect. Okay. An attorney, and his name is Matt Gonzalez. And he asked me to, uh, if I was, I was Commissioner of Veterans Affairs in San Francisco. Okay. So he asked me if I would endorse him. And so I endorsed him. I went to work on his campaign as a precinct captain, and he was a green. And I was like, he's not a Democrat. What is this green thing about? Okay. And and by him being a green, and, and he lost, he lost to Gavin Newsom. And I, I was heartbroken when I answered the phone, and, 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 and somebody cried on the phone to me, and I cried with him because Matt had lost. But in the fact that he lost, I gained insight into why I wanted to be a Green too. Wonderful. Uh, because the the Democratic Party just was not up to par. They are mm. still not up to par. They are still not as progressive as they like to fancy themselves. They're still not where we are currently. And we just need people to come on board and you get your stuff and come on with us. <laughs> right. We need you to come on because this is the party that matters to the universe. We're, we're a huge international party. And in this state, we're just a, a fragment of what everything takes to be a cohesive group of people and humanitarians to, that cares about the earth and the environment, each other, and these things. So I'm glad I became a Green Party member. Matt was the catalyst. Okay. And I've, I've stayed Green Party because I believe in the issues that present themselves. Give us a couple of things that well, we from. water. Okay. Water's always an issue because we're always dry. Mm -hmm. we, this is an environmental thing that we don't have enough water and, and people are, are contemplating um, desalinization of the ocean water. But that doesn't appeal to me because then where are those things that live in the ocean going to go if we're stealing their habitat? So we have to look at other ways. I've, I've contemplated some things. I have friends that are inventors and stuff, but um, I don't know if, if they're feasible, but I, I'm always open for to hear. to hear, to learn more, because I'm not the know-all, end-all, be-all. I don't support fracking, because that yeah, we're wastes, all that, <laughs> because that wastes, okay. that wastes so much water, and then it, the water that's wasted is contaminated by right. those chemicals that they use for fracking. And does that really make sense if you use common sense, just common sense, your common sense thought? If you're drilling the ground and you're fracking it and, and breaking it open with the, the pressure of all this water and these chemicals, aren't you fracturing? Don't we have faults in California? Okay. Aren't we tearing up the state? Are we helping uh, expedite our state crumbling into the ocean or everything wow. that people see? <laughs> or are we causing more earthquakes? Because a lot of the places that are fracking that never had earthquakes are having them now. Yeah, and so that that's a no-brainer. So we just have to use good common sense. And science. Science too. I love <laughs> science. I love science. Uh, Mr. Wizard and all that stuff back in the 50s. I was right there. Okay. But um, we have to use all of our tools and we have to um, support one another that are doing these things Definitely. to bring our party, our, our state, and our world to a better place. Thank you so much. Gubernatorial candidate number two, you know. <laughs> yes, I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> okay. Screaming off the top of Half Dome. Yes. <laughs> okay, now, you got me laughing. Okay. You know, the question was about what inspired you to be a Green, what's maintained you to be a Green, connecting that hopefully to platform either. Um, Values, pillars, yes. platform. If you could take it from there. Um, what inspired me about the Greens to be a Green? Values, pillar, platforms. I grew up my whole life hearing all these bad things as a conservative child about oh. Democrats. And okay. When I registered, um, I had seen the Green Party in the ballot primer since I was six. Okay. And there was just something about it that made so much sense with being in kindergarten and first grade. I love it. All the things that my teacher was teaching me, you know, Kathy Baker, and you know, the, 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 the real lessons about growing and, and our, our kinship with each other and, and Earth, um, it, it just made everything else seem so abstract and mm -hmm. absurd. And uh, talking from a legislative standpoint, um, we are paying our representatives hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and taking care of their health care and their families and their homes 
so that they can kind of like that Dr. Seuss book, just like stand under a highway staring down someone that they don't agree with because mm -hmm. of all the common ground they have that they could use their time for improving the state. They have to stare down something that might not even be a California issue. Right. It could be a national issue. And you aren't going to get a lot of things done legislatively with either party if the Greens sit back on our heels and just nitpick each party because they're not getting everything that they want done or if they're not successful at their agenda. You know, there are elements now that want to reform the Green platform so that it resembles a progressive Democratic platform. Well, what's important to you? Well, what's important to me is why I tell someone that I'm a green and not a progressive Democrat. Okay. Tell there's us. some there's a sanctity to the soil. There's okay. a sanctity like Veronica says to the water. There's a, a holiness in from where I come okay. from. When I get, you know, secular with the science, I can go to nature and still feel spiritual, still feel um, connected and in tune with what is all going on here. And when I go out far away from the city at night and I look up and there are so many lights and I can see the Milky Way. I love it. And I can see, you know, all these different galaxies and, and look at the craters on the moon and think to myself, this is what we've done with limited funds on a ball of rock floating in space mm -hmm. in the 13,000 years since the last, like, huge, horrible migration. How can we smile and stop tearing each other down over this little tiny stuff? And... When the Democrats see us join them in the House, they'll be like, oh, you want to work with us on this climate bill? Mm -hmm. And we'll be like, yeah. And then that's it. And then the Republicans are a third party in the state. I love it. Unless they get it. to us first. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on, everybody here. <laughs> this leads us to the last topic, which is change. Well, the, can I can I just oh, comment on something that yeah, Chris just definitely, said? definitely, definitely. Chris talked about yeah, um, definitely. Uh, the the things that the Democrats how they can latch on and reinvent themselves with our tools and somebody that I just <laughs> can you repeat that the, <laughs> and reinvent themselves with our, our tools. tools. Love and that. you know who pointed that out to me? Who? Dolores Huerta. Oh. I went to hear her talk, and I, I was trying to get her endorsement. Okay, and I said um. Which, and I was also trying to get her to support um, Barry Hermanson over Diane Feinstein. Gotcha. And that's what I was waiting for her to hear. I said, would you support the senator? And, da, 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 da. and she said, and I don't quote me verbatim, but I, she said that she loves Greens. Oh, okay. She loves our ideas. She loves a, a Democrat to learn a lot from Greens. She votes for one Green every time she goes in the ballot box. And so I told her, well, I'd like to be that one that you vote for <laughs> if you, you go to vote for them. But the, she's pointing out what Chris just said, that they want to reinvent themselves. They take our, their garner and farm out our, our ideas and concepts. Mm -hmm. And though it would be a respectable thing if it were uh, the acknowledgement that this is all for all of us. Yes. But it's not the way they do it, and they, they isolate. Yes. So this is what's important is that to me, green means uh, a growth, um, flourishing, um, doing well, and this is something that we can all do. And, uh, and the reason I'm running is not just because I'm a black woman and I'll be the first one and all that, blah, 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 that's fine. But I'm really running because we need somebody powerful in our party that is going to help overturn and end the two-party system. We there as long as there's going to be, and I tried to point this out to Yanni Emma Gonzalez. As long as there is a two party system, and they're talking about guns, there's always going to be a stranglehold and a gridlock between the Republicans and the Democrats. So what do you do? How do you stop that stranglehold and the gridlock? You get a new party. You get somebody in town that's going to listen to you, that's going to stand up with you and for you, and this is what our party will do. So the Green Party is the party that's going to overturn, um, forget the Democrats, um, forget the Republicans. They've had their opportunity. Look what they've done all these years. Let's get somebody in that's going to do something that's going to work for the people, we the people, and by the people. And we're going to listen to them. Okay, let's take this to changing so we do that. We thought about this in twofold. One is grassroots and the other is legislatively. 
So you lead us in. She's, you, you already went on it. So we just want to tie it back in and let you all have a conversation mm -hmm. about change. We see it as twofold. If you can agree or disagree, and then talk about grassroots and legislative to make these changes as green as we must have and we want. Um, the Green Party has to change. Okay. Uh, the party in its current state in California is a mutation of the, of the chromosome that is sustaining the party all around the world. The party in the United States is either, either uh, ailed by American identity culture or is, is falling prey to media messaging that is not affecting the party in other ways. Um, in other places, you know, the people who are having a really strong party right now are the ones who are, are really tied to the, the grassroots nature of how Greens are working. And they, they agree with their local left parties. They're forming their alliances saying, right. we're going to go for all these uncontested races and we're going to build up. We can't get a Green in California to run for an insurance commissioner. We can't get a green to run for controller. There are a whole bunch of just spaces, empty spaces, that the Green Party is qualified to fill. And there are over 100,000 greens who were formally registered to this state within the past 10 years. And maybe a dozen are running. Green Party offers one opportunity to people. It's a chance to get your name on the ballot. And we're seeing hordes of people this year running as progressive Democrats who would make excellent Greens. But they don't want to be with the Greens because this is going to be a backlash year against the Green Party. If this is a Democratic wave, the mainstream Democratic voter isn't too fond of the role that Jill Stein played in the last election. Even though we run presidents just to keep ballot access, and the Green Party that needs to change needs to get with the places where the state of California thinks to Veronica have taken strides beyond the party's platform when it comes to gender equity. Right you know, and my quote on gender equity would be, we'd have gen gender equity when we put a gender non-conforming person on the moon. Yeah. When we put a, a woman on the moon. When we put any non-white man on the moon, and then eventually Mars. That's, that's the kind of progress that I want to see if we want to talk about making this all for all of us. Okay. Yeah. Right. Do you want to Chris, end us up about change. I love Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no wedding proposals on this table. <laughs> the, the, um, I think that what Chris said was important, um, the, besides the gender equity, but the change takes, it will need to really take place in our party. Our party has to step up. And, and people say, well, I wanted to buy a coffee cup, but it still said Jill Stein's name in it from 216 off the, off the party side. Well, that may help generate money, but Jill Stein is not the party. And let me repeat that. Jill Stein is not the Green Party. She is a component of the Green Party. She took us far, and she may have taken us as far as she can take us. So we have to still be the Green Party. We're going to be the Green Party. We still have to stand for all of our values. And we have to fight, and we need new leadership. And so if you don't step up to the plate, we're not going to get our voices heard. If you're not willing to take a stand and to move forward and to look and see what we're talking about, if you have a computer or on your phone, just look and see what we're talking about. Look up our 10 key values or our four pillars. Look and see what we stand for. If you, if you don't want guns in your life, um, if you want to tell the NRA to go do themselves, uh, go online. <laughs> Look and see what we're talking about and why we're perfect for you. Because we're the we're the party of the people. When I talk about we the people, I mean us, Free. you, them, everybody. We the people. I'm talking about every human being that breathes air. We are the people, and we can make change. We can uh, institute change, and we can make a lot of stuff happen. But we have to be a cohesive, and we have to be together as one. Yes. We're going to be closing up our conversation. I've really enjoyed, I've been inspired mm -hmm. by both of you. I'm really thankful for you stepping up to run. I'd like to give you a chance to, not closing statement, but a statement of inspiration 
to other greens and other folk there, like you've started doing already, but if you could take a couple of minutes each to sum up in a way why you're running, what you are cheating by running, and then inspire those folk to vote for us and then also step up to run. How about that? Sounds good. Sound? Okay. That sounds okay. Okay. Um, you want me to go? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason that I chose to run is um, I think it's multifold. Um, besides being of the first black woman, I wanted to show um, that our party is a party of inclusion. We don't turn our back on you because you're different. I'm a black trans woman. Okay. And so nowhere has that happened. And so I'll be covering two things by being uh, the governor. I'll be a black woman trans governor. That's three things. Right. So um, I was just counting for you. <laughs> yeah, right. You got but, three but, going. But, um, but the main thing is that we are a party of, of, of not just change, but we're a party that is genuinely compassionate about our earth, yes. about each other, about what we do with our life. I'm 65, I won't be 65 again. Mm. I'm still young. I've been an activist since I was in the 60s. And I'm a child of the 50s, so I've seen our earth and our views and our things change. I remember all the stuff, the discrimination, the hate um, in uh, uh, Alabama when they're sicking dogs on the black kids uh, in the 60s. I went through all of that. And I joined the NAACP because I wanted to make a change and I was in Detroit, Michigan and my mom said, you're upset. I said, I want to do something. And she said, well, you can help by joining the NAACP. So I think I became an activist then by joining. And so we have young people that have brilliance beyond belief. Yes. I mean, they are they really are our future. And it, and it, it excites me and it stimulates me to know that they're so, so, so very smart. And they can help solve a lot of the things that LR State. They can come up with some hot, fabulous ideas if we just listen to them, if we just lift them up and we hear what they're saying. So when you talk about uh, the preamble in the, uh, in the Constitution, we the people, I use that a lot because when you talk about we the people, what people are you talking about? All of us. Right. Uh, all of us. We the people. And this is what I'm talking about, and this is why I'm running for governor. This is why I want to make a change. This is why I'm reaching out to the listeners to say, I need your help. I'm not above asking for help. I need your help in order to get my name on the ballot. I have a GoFundMe page. I have a website. My name is Veronica with a K. <laughs> and yeah, that's the name of your website Press. and all the information. And, um, Veronica Fimbres, F-I-M-B-R-E-S. I have a GoFundMe page. Um, you can look me up. I'm easy to find. I'm a living legend, according to the LGBT Museum. I'm a living legend and a, and a trans pioneer. But not only that, I care, I care about humanity. You don't, you don't become a nurse. I've been a nurse over 35 years. You do not become a nurse to treat people mean. You become a nurse because you care about people. You become a nurse because you want to make a difference. You want to help someone heal. And at my last job was as a hospice nurse. So I wanted to make those people feel so loved while they were transitioning from this life to the next one or wherever their spirit was going to go after they left their physical body. I wanted them to know that they were loved because that matters. That matters. That's Thank very important. Thank you so much for sharing your vision, of history about yourself. It's very appreciative. And you, your name again and your website. Veronica Fimbres, F-I-M, F is in fire, I-M-B-R-E-S dot com. And I'm a, I have a GoFundMe page. And it says, help me get on the ballot. I can use your help to get on the ballot. It takes uh, roughly $4,000 to get on the ballot. And I need your help to make that happen because I don't want to fall by the wayside. I want Chris on the ballot. I want uh, everybody that wants to be on the ballot as governor. 
and anybody that's running and down uh, ballot venues, I want all of us to be on the Thank you so the ballot. much. Thank you. And so we're gonna, you wanna do your closing statement yeah. and give information to Right. You. I would love to live in a world where people don't steal my bicycle, okay? <laughs> In San Francisco, I had a bicycle locked up, and it was still stolen. And so to blow off steam, I went to a San Francisco Giants game, and Matt came through a perfect game then, and I saw a perfect baseball game. They're very rare. Yes. More people stood on their feet to applaud for free hot dogs when he threw his 12th strikeout in the seventh inning than stood up and celebrated his perfect game at the end. Mm. Which is why I think that if the Girl Scouts offered special Girl Scout cookies on election day, that we would get more people to vote just because there was food for it. Okay. Um, this is a, a very tense and, and uncertain time. Okay. Before the lucky ones, my generation, whatever you want to call us, we stepped into a job market where our parents were still working. And for us to take a job, uh, for me as a single man, would displace someone possibly with kids who needs that job more than I do. You know, we're, we're in a state where the unions are destroyed. Veronica belongs to, you know, hopefully as a nurse, the Nurses Association, which is one of the strongest ones in the state still. Okay. Um, mainly, the, the lifting of one another and listening with love. There are people in, in villages like Ion and Mendocino who have been working in wastewater treatment, like my friend Daniel Staines, who can tell you that all the state needs to do is approve some direct to potable, and they can reclaim in some areas up to 30% of their freshwater drinking supply. Mm -hmm. It's just not something that you hear talked about. Right. And, you know, desalination is in the future, but we can also use some of that brine to keep the ice off of the roads in the north during the winter time. There are, there are ways that we can not, we can persevere into our problems and roll back school start times and make kids' mental health better because they are the change. And in four years from now, there's a 14-year-old sitting in a classroom gonna watch this or be reading the ballot who's gonna turn 18 and she's gonna walk her papers into the governor's office and Secretary of State's office and say, I'm running for Green Party for governor. I didn't talk to anybody in the Green Party. I didn't see if this was okay, but it's okay with them under their pillars and values. Congratulations, just like Veronica did, just like Josh did, just like I did. Right. I can run for whatever I want to run for. If someone keeps telling me to get a job, I'm going to apply for the very best one. <laughs> okay. And then I'll just keep going down the list. All right. I love it. It's been my pleasure to facilitate the conversation. Again, as I said, I've been inspired. I'd like you both again to, to repeat your name, what office you're running for, and any information to our audience. My name is Veronica Thembrez, V-E-R-O-N-I-K-A, F as in fire, I-M-B-R-E-S. You can find me at veronicathembrez.com. Um, I have a GoFundMe page. I have a PayPal on my website, so you can donate securely to that, and I'm running for I'm proudly running for the state of California as the Green Party gubernatorial candidate. Thank you. Please. With gratitude to Sudanam for organizing this and to Sid Akbar and Grant Union High School and the students who are operating the camera equipment that I'm speaking into. My name is Chris Carlson. I'm a former substitute teacher and puppeteer. My website is goober2018.com. It's uber with a G. G-U-B-E-R 2018.com. Other candidates have blurbs um, as well on my site. I'm running a Green Onion satirical press on that site. <laughs> I'm raising money for the Girl Scouts right now, and I'll be raising money for the Animal Welfare Institute once the show starts on March 18th. Um, please don't give any money to my campaign. Uh, we spend a lot of money. We spent $81, $82, 83000000 million on Prop 8. Uh, for nothing. So let's get it together and, and help out some like animal shelters and aquariums and places that kids need to go to have their mind expanded. Well, I don't other people's campaigns. I don't have an ethical dilemma <laughs> of donating to someone else. Okay, I just, just got a personal it. loan. Okay. I was paying student debt for this. It's okay. like, okay. All right. 
<laughs> Again, I, I, I'd like to thank you both <laughs> for your time and the conversation. I look forward to us having other ones. I look forward to it. Thank, really you so, thank you so much. And thank like Christopher you. said, thanks to the student and the, this uh, yes. department for featuring us. Uh, Josh Jones, we miss you. We love you, brother. Hey. <laughs> thank you. So for Josh next, Jones. Next week on Gubernatorial Candidates Forum. Four, three, two, one, cut. You guys can take.